Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today uh, we are going to take a look at a program, a youth program called RILA. And with us today we have the expert of RILA, that is Darren Aerosmith. Well, welcome it, Darren. Thanks, Wade. I'm glad to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your personal life, and what you actually do for a living. Well, uh, I'm very happily married. I've got four kids. Uh, I do commercial real estate. I primarily work in the Caneo Valley, uh, which is in south of Santa Barbara here. I've uh, been doing that my entire adult life, and uh, it allows me the freedom to do all the stuff I like to do with Rotary. So what got you involved with Rotary? Um, I, I had a um, kind of a, a service-based attitude, and when it became appropriate in my life, I uh, looked up the Thousand Oaks Rotary Club, and they welcomed me with open arms. And one of the very first things they uh, asked me to do was get involved with something called RILA, and I didn't know at that point how to say no, so here I am today. Wow, good for you. <laughs> now, RILA, what does RILA stand for? RILA is Rotary Youth Leadership Awards, and it's actually a program that is done all over the world. Uh, it takes place in many different forms, and uh, some of them are one day long, and some of them serve youth at, up into... Uh, the 30 year old range. Sometimes it's a train trip, sometimes it's a day at the park, but um, our district here has taken on its own uh, four day event. Great. Now I realize and I've heard that there are over 500 Riley camps around the world um, in all the different districts throughout the, the Rotary world itself. What's uh, unique or special about the, the camp? Actually, Riley, what's the program? Well, I, I believe that our Riley. Um, incorporates many aspects of Rotary. Uh, I have not been to other RILAs, but I have read a lot about them. I have been sent a lot of literature over the years. Uh, I got to kind of pick and choose what I thought was meaningful and useful and relevant. And we have evolved over the past decade into something that uh, really has a lot of relevance uh, to today's high school students. Uh, it is a program where the students get to attend and grade their teachers, and we take those, uh, we take those assessments and grades very seriously, and it, we continue to evolve because we're not um, in any way uh, going to not listen to other people's ideas, and the kids really have a voice when it comes to uh, the benefit that RILA offers. Great. So what would you say the focus is, the actual focus or the message you're trying to convey to these uh, young, young uh, adults? Well, the primary interest here is, is that it is a leadership camp, and we do try to thread the idea of leadership um, as defined by Rotary throughout all of the programs that are offered. But I think that it's really important that kids understand that they have to understand themselves and have confidence and understand the people that are around them before they can actually be true and effective leaders. Uh, we have kids that are already on a great trajectory. We have kids that don't know what their trajectory is and we try to just open up their minds and give them uh, the courage to uh, explore themselves without being judged by other students and what's cool. Uh, we really do want kids to uh, follow their hearts. Good, and um, Rotary and RILA, what, what is the tie together? In other words, what do you think the principles of Rotary are that you're trying to convey to these uh, young people? Well, I think, uh, you know, Rotary is a great demonstration of the difference between something that you believe in and something that you actually do. Uh, Rotary offers uh, a lot of avenues to, to demonstrate service above self. And throughout the world, we have many great leaders and many great stories about how we've changed lives, if not cultures. Uh, we've definitely left uh, an indelible mark on the world. And I think that when we try to uh, demonstrate by how we act, what we do, and what we say in front of today's youth, uh, when the time is appropriate for them, when they have, when they have the ability, and they have the resources, they can come back, and even if they don't become Rotarians, they act in a Rotarian-like manner. We really do believe in the four-way test. We want them to be good people, we want them to be accountable, and we want them to be relevant to other people in the world. Great. Now, you've been doing this for a while. You've been the director of that camp for uh, quite a number of years. How long actually has it been? Do you, do you keep track? Uh, I, I believe I'm now uh, 
on a decade at this point. So, <laughs> Is that right? right? Congratulations. Good for you. Right. The governors have not found a reason to fire me yet, <laughs> so I'm going to keep doing it as long as they'll let me do it. Yeah, I trust me, you're going to be there for a lot longer then. <laughs> you did a great job. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as being the director, what, what um, roles, tasks do you actually have to do with the camp itself? Is it a full-year program planning from beginning to end? or? It is. Um, this is a really unique program in that we don't take a penny from the district. Uh, we uh, offer up uh, a certain amount of spaces to all of the clubs in our district and um, we allow them to reserve spaces according to their own budget. And some of the clubs are smaller and some are larger and some have a really heavy emphasis on youth and some of them don't, but what we try to do is allow 100% um, participation throughout the district, but we basically start, uh, my job starts one month after Rotary, uh, I'm sorry, that right after RILA ends. I take a one month break and then we start all over again. And what we try to do is make sure that all of the incoming presidents understand that we need to be a part of their budget and assign who their RILA chairs are going to be and make sure that we hand the baton off in a successful way. And we try to make it as easy as possible for the clubs to understand and be involved. And really the commitment in the beginning is just to identify a person that we can deal with, uh, put uh, our, uh, the cost of RILA to the club on their budget, and, and then we sort of just start feeding out instructions as the year goes along. Great, great. Now, how many clubs actually participate? We have 74 clubs in our district. We, uh, it varies from year to year, but we are right around anywhere between 80 to 85 percent of the clubs will participate. Wow. And some clubs uh, will do it, and, uh, and then they'll back out the next year. But we do have a pretty consistent base of the clubs that are involved. Uh, they they kind of have their budget set, and the line item is there, and they know how many kids they want to send. So they reserve that number of spaces, and then when the time comes, uh, they go through the selection process, and they fill the, their spaces with the kids that they think best represent their club and send them up to Rila. Great. Well, um, you brought some pictures with you. Appreciate that. So let's take a trip through the camp and see what it actually looks like. Sure, so we can absolutely. see it from beginning to end. So the first picture we have is of the Rila. Um, looks like the, the tent with the big sign there. Tell us where the location of this is at. Well, we've been fortunate enough to find uh, Camp Rama in the hills of Ojai. It is absolutely gorgeous, and the camp uh, has done nothing but treat us uh, like gold. They, they accommodate all 300 plus people that we have up there for four days. Uh, they feed us, and we uh, just really enjoy it. And the picture that you're looking at is where all of the kids are initially greeted when they show up. This is where they register. Uh, and they're getting their first taste of what Rila is going to be like when they get there. <laughs> Great. The next picture shows us actually in the uh, pretty picturesque uh, valley there. You must have a hard time spending a few days there, but a beautiful area it looks like. Well, it's a really wonderful because the hills are very quiet, and one of the uh, key elements of being at Rila for the students is that they don't have any cell phones. They're not going to be watching any television. They have no connection with the outside world. So they are up in the hills of Ojai, and they have just an absolute gorgeous setting to sort of uh, decompress and focus on themselves for right. four days. Now, you take the phones away. I remember that as part of the uh, policies and procedures we to do. get them engaged. Great. The next picture shows a, a group of, it looks like going through a, an exercise of some sort. <laughs> well, you notice that they're wearing bandanas, and that's kind okay. of just them showing their spirit. Uh, the kids are divided into eight color groups, and the bandanas are indicative of the group that they travel with. They're co-ed groups, and they do everything together throughout the uh, four days that they're there. They happen to be standing, that looks like about a, a lunchtime meal. They're standing on the benches, and we either have them doing announcements, or they might be doing a chant in this picture, something that's <laughs> just showing that uh, they're proud of their color group. Good, good. And then the next picture, uh, we, we see a group, uh, looks like another... Uh, bonding exercise, I would say. This is actually one of the premier uh, classes everybody loves, and they rant and rave about this. This is a team building exercise, and that particular group is being led by one of our instructors through an exercise that 
sort of uh, helps them understand uh, communication, uh, the benefit of communicating well, uh, collaborating, and what the breakdown of communication actually looks like. Great. And then the next picture. That picture is of uh, one of the cl courses that we teach. It's called Strong Mind, Strong Body. Uh, we want um, the students to walk away with the idea that how they treat their bodies affects uh, their success. We want them to, to be healthy. We give them uh, some instructions on basic nutrition, uh, some exercise uh, regimens, and we just really demonstrate how eating poorly really affects their ability to perform uh, mentally and emotionally. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great one there. Next picture we have is a picture of insight again. That is, that's in, the, in one of our big meeting halls, and uh, the, this happens to be a course that's taught by Jimmy Weldon, and Jimmy Weldon is, I believe he's 92 at this point, and I've never met a man that has been able to connect with uh, people under 20 that is at, as old as he is, but he <laughs> is an amazing treasure that we have. He loves coming and talking about patriotism and uh, sense of community. Hmm. Uh, he talks a lot about our flag and what it, what it took for uh, all of our youth to have the freedoms that they do today. And one of the demonstrations here is, is he, have, he has kids holding hands all around the room, and when they're working together, uh, he has one small light bulb that once they all connect, the light bulb lights up, and the kids just take that <laughs> message home and really believe that when you work together, a lot of great things can happen. Great. Another picture you have here shows... Um Looks like a blowing up a balloon or something. I can't tell. <laughs> that's a yoga ball, <laughs> and that's still part of the team building class. And uh, it's actually uh, not. We don't call it a yoga ball there. That's actually a condor egg, and they are not allowed to <laughs> touch it with their hands. And they have to be able to communicate in a way and move the condor egg without breaking it. And because they will, we want to save the condor. So it's a timed event. And it, this is a true demonstration about people getting together and trying to be able to uh, understand each other and uh, relate when to follow, when to lead, and uh, how to be creative. <laughs> That's a great one. So what size are these groups, by the way? I, I see they've been pretty consistent, but I don't have a head count. Right. The, the typical group is going to be about 30 students. And, and like I said, they are going to travel the, the uh, weekend together. Of course, the, at night they sleep in uh, gender-specific cabins and they're broken off into cabins. But during the day, they are uh, groups of 30 uh, divided into eight color groups. And so uh, they, are, uh, they become a very tight-knit group. One of the things about RILA is when you arrive, we purposely make sure that if you know somebody, you come from the same school or same town, there is no way you're going to wind up in the same cabin or the same group. So you're intentionally put in a situation where you have to start to reach out and talk to new people. Great. So I take away the uh, comfort factor there. Absolutely. That's a, that's a good one. Absolutely. Uh, next picture you have is a picture of a group here. That looks Sign like something. Yeah, it's probably a closing ceremony uh, or right before the closing ceremonies, the yellow group. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of this where they will hang out together. They love their adult counselors. The great part about RILA is, is that we're bringing up volunteer Rotarians. And in this case, in this group, we had some uh, uh, former RILA graduates come up as adults uh, to sort of give back. Uh, nice. they, were, they were very moved by their experience with RILA. As, as a matter of fact, this particular group, um, the young Rotarian had been told that she would never be able to work for NASA by, by a, a, a teacher. And at RILA, she was inspired to uh, reach for her goals. And uh, she now works for JPL. <laughs> and so she just, just knew that RILA actually changed her life and wants to come up and give that message to these kids. That is great. Good story there. Next picture we have uh, the rope course, I believe. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> the, the camp installed, uh, sometime after we had uh, started using this venue, they installed a world-class ropes course. And we have uh, trained professionals up there that helps all eight groups get through uh, understanding uh, basically courage in the face of adversity uh, and teamwork and relying on each other. There are a lot of tears on this day, <laughs> but we give them the courage to get through this and, and uh, support each other and really try to give kids uh, a sense of accomplishment. 
Um, it might sound cliche because a lot of uh, team building exercises do things like rope courses, but when you thread this in with all the other things that they go through on the weekend, it really does, uh, it, it is kind of the glue that keeps them together because they just went through something that's very traumatic for some, uh, but they're all just supporting each other in a really great way. The next picture shows uh, one of the um, stands, it looks like, where probably one of the few times you actually get to be that close to each other on that rope course. Right. Um, this, is, this is where, uh, if you could get a snapshot of their mind, this is where uh, they're thinking, what did I sign up for? <laughs> Uh, it's a really, uh, you're really high up there and you're being asked to step out onto very thin uh, cables. So your mind is telling you this isn't safe, uh, but everybody else is telling you to go across. So this is, uh, this is the beginning for some of these kids. <laughs> that is great. Then the next picture actually shows them on the course itself. Right. So as far as team building, it must be difficult. It's more of a self-awareness this component of it. Absolutely. Uh, each one of them will go through with another person, okay. and so there is a self-awareness, uh, self-assessment, and then in some cases you're asked to help somebody and hold them up, and in other cases uh, you're the one asking for help. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, it very much has both of those components to it. Well, I know this is uh, one of those uh, life-changing times. I hear quite a few stories from those that attend about uh, how interesting that was for them and how life-changing it was to have that courage to walk across that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That's a good one. Next picture we have is a picture, uh, again, inside, coming back inside. Right. Uh, this is another one of the courses. We have a lot of excellent courses, and they uh, each of the courses are designed to supplement and complement uh, another course. This one is public speaking, and public speaking at, at RILA is not about standing behind a podium and uh, how to hold your chin up and, and turn and face the audience. This is about identifying your passion and invoking passion and getting things done. Uh, we uh, sort of look at people that identify problems and very rarely do they come up with solutions and then yet we don't get a lot of things done. They don't do anything with it. So you're gauged on your effectiveness. The kids get to make up their own assignments, and there's guidelines for doing that, and they get to become whoever they want to be. In other words, they get to decide what school they've already graduated from, or what career they already have, or if they're a millionaire, or if they are you know, working for Greenpeace. And they have to go out and they have to make get, get votes, or they have to sell a product. Some of the products are very interesting, but we want them to remember that if you want something in life, you ask for it. And when you have a crowd, it's an opportunity and never let that, little, that little adrenaline burst stop you from doing something amazing. Uh, most people are so afraid of speaking to people and it's usually just that one little thing, that one little uh, burst of adrenaline that stops people from ever getting up in front of somebody. So we have these kids that'll tell you in the beginning, I'll never talk in front of a group <laughs> and then there they are at the end right. and being cheered on and with huge smiles on their face. And that's got to be the majority. There's very few that are feel comfortable about actually speaking in public anyways or with the experience of that. Right. We walk them through why, they, why they're upset, why they're afraid, and we knock, we knock down all of the excuses. And uh, we, we ask them to own what they look like and don't worry about what other people think. We want them to get up in front of a group of people and always be confident that if there is somebody out there that wants to make fun of you, then that's not your audience. But uh, never be afraid of... Uh, of tripping and falling, never be afraid of making a mistake. Our leaders all make mistakes. We all, we all give demonstrations of the mistakes we made. We give them permission to be uh, imperfect, and in that, we allow them to go out and have the courage to, to do something that they're passionate about. Great. Next picture we have is a group picture, maybe a selfie. I think that was a selfie. <laughs> um, the, the gal there in the front in the center is our, uh, she is a uh, certified fitness trainer uh, and she, was, she is the uh, trainer for the Strong Mind, Strong Body course. She really connects well with the kids. Uh, she just uh, lights them up and they get a, a, a very quick dose of what it's like to lead a health, healthy and clean lifestyle. Great. Another, uh, another picture there, that's a pretty good sized group you have in the background of that one. That is the entire student body. Uh, <laughs> that's, that is right before our closing ceremonies. All the kids are wearing their Ryla shirts. And uh, that is a selfie. Joe Joyce there is our lead counselor and he stood in front of the group and 
uh, we got everybody together for a group photo. It's hard to find yourself in those photos, but we make sure we <laughs> get that. them done every year. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you get to mention Joe too, good guy. <laughs> Joe's an incredible man, uh, love his passion. We'd be hard pressed to find a person that uh, has greater passion for this program than he does. Right. Another picture you have uh, shows uh, probably a, what is that, a student? Two students the, or a student and counselor? Right, no, those are two students. Okay. And you know, I'll just take this picture as an opportunity to discuss the Pinnacle course uh, in uh, RILA. It's a diversity course. And diversity um, is uh, designed to let the students know that they're not alone in the things that they're going through. And they're very much the same in terms of uh, some of the problems that they're going through. A lot of times people feel alone and they feel that they are isolated in certain ways and or they don't realize how many people have the same thoughts and feelings they do. And this course is an hour and 50 minutes long and they do everything they can to break down all kinds of barriers uh, between uh, beliefs, experiences, um, uh, misconceptions, and we have a lot of growth out of this one particular course and it really helps the entire weekend in terms of bonding. But the diversity aspect of, of RILA is e extremely important. We want to make sure that people of all beliefs and backgrounds uh, have a voice. We want to make sure that everybody is, um, uh, they feel relevant, they feel important, and that they are never held uh, down and told that they can't do something. That's great. That's a good message to convey also. Next picture we have, uh, Mealtime, if possibly, here? Right. Uh, we eat family style. And <laughs> it, for some of these kids, they le lead such busy lives. Uh, we sit down, and there's food in the middle of the table, and you have to ask for certain things to be passed to you. You dish your own food. You eat it. If you want more, uh, you can have it. And the really great thing about uh, the, the way they take care of us there is if a, if a platter or a tray or a bowl is empty, you hold it up in the air and miraculously they bring you an entire replacement. <laughs> so no one ever goes hungry. Uh, we always warn the kids, don't do that when you get home. Mom and dad might not like it. But we ask them to say please and thank you and we give a moment of silence and they can do whatever they want to do with that moment of silence. But we, it's a, it is a, it is a yet another bonding time and we have the adults sit with the students and we really uh, value this time three, three times a day. Good. Now, is that uh, actually staff, uh, camp staff, or is that part of your staff that does that? that the the uh, cafeteria is run by the, the camp, camp staff, okay. and they bring in the food. We get to decide what the menu looks like. Okay. They prepare it for us, and we have snacks. We try, to, we try to make sure that they're eating healthy, and they have plenty of food. <laughs> Good. Next picture we have. That is Assemblywoman Jackie Irwin, who uh, has incredible stories from her family in terms of Ryla, her son. Uh, she believes that Ryla changed the course of her son's life. She's been a past counselor. She has uh, been a, a demonstration of an incredibly strong woman that's gone and done amazing things. Uh, we invited her up this year to uh, kick the weekend off and get the kids to open up their minds to being um, open to doing whatever it is that their heart desires. She, she has her own personal story that's amazing, but she's an amazing uh, testament to what uh, you can do if you really put your right. mind to it. Now, is she a member of your club? She is a member of the Thousand Oaks yeah. Rotary Club. Yeah, very but good. As she's serving uh, in her role right now, she is uh, an honorary member sure. because she's, time you know, commitments. time commitments, but she really does do a great job of trying to balance everything to the best of her ability. Good. We have another picture here. Next picture shows... Uh, that is Jimmy Weldon. <laughs> it is Jimmy Weldon. Jimmy Weldon. Um, he is... If anybody has never seen Jimmy Weldon, uh, he, he is a man that uh, is one of the original voices of the uh, Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Uh, he uh, comes up and does a, some ventriloquism, tells a lot of jokes, talks about patriotism, and I can't tell you, uh, th there, it, it's, it's magical to sit and listen to him. I think every uh, person should have a man like this in their life. I, I have to stand usually in front of him at the end of his speech because he gets rushed by the kids, uh, and they just absolutely love him and want to be around him. And one of his best messages that he leaves the kids with is th the two most important things you can say in life is thank you and I love you. Nice. And the kids just 
eat it up. They love it. And I've been getting a lot of thank you notes with those exact words on it. <laughs> That's great. Last picture we have uh, shows the wind down, I would believe, of the, the camp itself. Well, you know, it is Rotary Youth Leadership Awards, and during the award ceremony, we're doing that. We're giving out awards, and we're, we're um, giving service above self and character awards. But sometimes there's things that happen at RILA that uh, fall outside the scope of what's normal. So this year, uh, Dorina, who is in this picture, uh, also started at the Youth Empowerment Summit in Simi Valley. She's, a, she's just an incredible Rotarian. But she went above and beyond with a student that was having a lot of problems, and she really gave a piece of herself uh, in a way that she didn't have to. So we gave her the um, Counselor Hero Award because she just really did more than she was ever uh, asked to do. And this picture here shows the kids hugging her because when she got the award, she started to cry. Good. Have a little bit more time here. T tell us a little bit about the scholarships. I know that you hand out a few scholarships during the event at the end of it. Right. The scholarships are a surprise. We don't announce this ever to anybody, although the more popular the program is becoming, the kids are talking about it. But what we are doing is the, the Rotary Clubs are donating whatever is in their budget into the um, RILA budget, and we will uh, take... Uh, the leaders as chosen by the students mm -hmm. uh, and uh, offer them a scholarship in front of everybody as a surprise and we usually have a dignitary such as yourself making this announcement mm -hmm. and it's a surprise and the message is you know bring your a-game you never know who's watching be good always don't do it because there's an incentive just live your life that way mm -hmm. and uh, it, and, the, and it really resonates because people afterwards always say oh my gosh I had no idea and we say that's right you don't have any idea. Just just do it that way all the time. <laughs> that is good. I know you've changed a lot of lives. I've seen it up there. And by the way, thank you very much for allowing me to be one of the uh, speakers for this event and giving out the scholarships. It means a lot to a lot of people. Uh, real quickly, if you can give me uh, an answer for that, how many lives do you think you've changed? Give me a number. Well... I don't know, uh, to be honest. I'd like to think that it's in the thousands, but I often feel blessed if I know for sure that I've changed one life a year. So I don't know. Yeah, that's being very modest. I, I've, I've seen the results. I've, I've seen all of them. Um, you've changed the lives of all of them, including those Rotarians that are helping you out. And very, very high respect. With that, uh, I'd like to thank you for being here. My pleasure. And um, take a look at the Riley Camp. Uh, Riley itself is offered each year. There's about 200 scholarships giving out throughout the four counties in our district. And with that, we will see you next time. Thank you.